breaking that ceiling, let it go. My situation is that while I'm getting some good advice from an individual counselor, I would also like to get some from other people who have been in my shoes, so to speak. I was married for 25 years and have two kids. My ex-wife and I had, what I would have termed, until a year ago, a great marriage. Both my ex-wife and I had good jobs. She is a hospital tech and I'm a shift supervisor in a factory. Plus we operated a side business, farm. We were happy, I guess, or at least I was happy. Until two years ago, my plant began to downsize and I was forced to move to third shift to keep my job. She works evenings, so our together time was at a minimum. She complained, but there wasn't much I could do without quitting and losing seniority and pension benefits. We began to argue a lot and that put a further strain on us. I got a call from one of her co-workers who informed me that she thought my wife was getting too close to another lab tech named Brad. When we were able to get some alone time, I asked her about it, and she said that it was nothing to worry about, just friends. Because of the heads up, I began to notice some things about my wife. She was working out more, dressing nicer, and wearing more provocative undies. Since I rarely saw her after she got home from work, I don't know when she got home, at all. Our kids are all in college so there isn't anybody to say when or if she got home, after work. One thing for sure was that she would call me at first break and we would chat about stuff. One night, two winters ago, I got sick at work and called her to say I was coming home, early. When I got home, at about 2 a.m., I noticed her car was still warm because the snow was melting on the hood. So she had just got home from somewhere right before I did. Now, when I called her to tell her I was coming home, she specifically told me she was home, which was clearly a lie. I didn't mention it, but I began to keep my eyes open more. This is really bothering me, so I'll finish it later. Later that week, I asked her about it and we had a really bad, knockdown drag out fight about it and she admitted everything. She said that he was a much better lover than me, was younger, more fit and bigger than I did. Now, when we were just married, so Brad must be hung like a horse. She left that night and stayed with Brad, for I don't know how long, but when she called me later that month, she was living with her parents. She said she wanted to get back together and forget about the past, and work for the future. I refused and we divorced later that year. Since then, she has been trying to get me to give her another chance, saying she was lying about the good times being better with Brad, just to anger me and get me to fight for her. I don't believe anything she says. Our kids want us to reconcile, both sets of parents do as well. In fact, it is the main source of conversation when any of us get together. Everybody wants us to reconcile, but me. I talked to some of her co-workers and they say that she bragged about getting steak instead of hamburger, and that a younger man was just what she needed. She says that the affair was partially my fault for not being home more and working night shift, but that in order that there be no walls between us, she will tell me everything that happened and will completely cut Brad out of her life forever. I don't know what to do about this. I know I can live with her, even though I don't love or trust her. So that everybody in both families will be happy. Or I can go my own way and refuse to take her back and continue as I'm doing now. She has told me that she will prove that she loves me and only wants an opportunity to do so. I don't know. Can any relationship this bad ever get any better? I guess that the way she compared Brad to me is the most difficult to get over. She says she was just saying that to hurt me, while we were fighting, and to show her co-workers that she was over me and was in a better place, but that she soon realized that she had made a huge mistake and that it was me she always loved but I was never around to show her any affection. I wonder how those of you who have been cheated on ever get over the comparisons, real or imagined between the husband and the lover. She swears that our bonding was always better but that since I went on thirds, we never did it as often as we did before, which is true. She says that she is the one who broke it off with Brad, not him, and that she has not seen him, outside of work since she went to her parents' house. Her mom says that he would not ever have been welcomed and that she vouches for her daughter's words. I don't know how, but that is what she said. The divorce was final about a year ago. The affair was a year or so before that. According to her, her mom and her minister, she realized her sins and asked forgiveness. She says she hasn't been with Brad since the first month after the affair was revealed. She has always said that, even a year ago during our meetings, pre-divorce. She has publicly begged my forgiveness several times since and continues to do so. To this day, before, she has always had a bad temper and would say the most hurtful things she could. Whether or not Brad actually is a better lover, I can't say, or whether she said those things out of anger, is anyone's guess. My best guess is that he wasn't better, just more available and attentive. While I was busting my ass on third shift, I think that she means that if I give her another chance, she will quit her job so as not to be in the same building as Brad. But I'm just guessing. By the way, she is living in an apartment with another woman who attends the same church, who also said that she has never had a male visitor, and that she, the roommate, would also not allow Brad into the apartment. 
but you all see how it is. Everybody is vouching for her. She is acting like an angel, telling everyone and sundry how much she loves me and is so sorry that now I'm becoming the bad guy for being an unfeeling, unforgiving, non-Christian, for not giving her a chance to redeem herself. I also don't want to give the impression that I'm still pining about my marriage. Since the divorce, I've been dating and have had a couple of really fun and highly physical mini relationships and have been told by lots of ladies that I'm a highly desirable man. One woman has offered to begin a live-in type of relationship with me, and she is really nice, cute and a few years younger than my ex-wife. So, I really can't complain. I guess that I do love my family and do want them to be happy. But I don't want to repeat this hideous situation. Plus, the holidays are when both families get together and that is very tough. Even after a year, both families know everything, even the bad-mouthing. She told them, make no mistake, neither family blames me for her actions. My kids have already said that they are ashamed of their mom, and my youngest daughter will barely speak to her. Her own sister apparently slapped her in the chops when she was told about it. I would really have liked to have seen that, but both our parents are very devout and they believe that she has been forgiven and that the family comes first. My kids just want things to go back to the way they were pre-affair. They all think I am being stubborn and that her words were just so much hot air. And she meant none of them. Also, she has been an open book since the divorce, going nowhere without letting her mom or sister know where she is and what she's doing. She tried several times to inform me, but I didn't want to get involved. In the back of my mind, what if she is sincere? What if this was a one-time aberration, brought on by a bad situation, and she will truly be the woman I married again? Let me tell you, that before the affair, I know that she loved me, and I know that I loved her. After 25 years, I know her pretty well, and some of what she says about the affair I know to be true. Just from past, non-infidelity, issues and situations. My ex is a very emotional and dramatic woman, who has always worn her heart on her sleeve, so to speak. About 15 years ago, when I was still an engineer and not yet in production, we went to a corporate garden party and I got drunk and kissed a woman and she caught us. She went ballistic and screamed and swore and made a huge scene. I apologized for months afterwards, even though it meant less than nothing to me. So, I guess I'm not totally innocent, either. By the way, my kids are 20, 22 and 24. Until right before Thanksgiving, I wasn't even considering reconciliation. I guess that it all boils down to two issues. 1. Should I consider R2? Is it even possible? She has done a lot to prove she has changed. I know that she isn't seeing Brad or anybody else. Because she could not hide it from her mom, or roommate or sister. And they would tell me the truth. Regardless, she doesn't blame me for her affair, but for my part in allowing the marriage to go bad, if that makes any sense. I'm really hung up on the physical comparisons, but she has repeatedly said that it was not true and was done to hurt my feelings. But how can I be sure that is the truth? I would really like to hear from people who have been in my situation and successfully overcame these issues, both cheaters and those cheated on. I want to know if it's possible and how they did it, their explanations and reasoning. From the moment I was certain she was having an affair until our divorce was final, I was in a very bad place. I don't know how I was able to even work. The anger, disillusionment and shame were with me every single moment of every day. It was worse than anything I ever saw in combat. But I thank God for my military training which allowed me to concentrate on the tasks at hand. During those months, she begged, pleaded, offered any proofs I would need to show she never meant what she said. Our families and friends repeatedly asked me to stop and take a breather and not make any irrevocable decisions but the pain was too great. I wanted her to suffer, I wanted her to experience even a little of what I was going through. I wanted to figuratively rub her nose in the filth. I still don't know how love can change to hate so quickly. She has always been like this. When she is angry, she says whatever is most hurtful to the person she is angry with. She had a road rage incident a few years back and took court-mandated anger management classes, but left as soon as she was able to. She is now in counseling for her issues. It's a situation where she has individual therapy and group classes every other week. I'm afraid to commit, or more probably, I am not comfortable with the idea of R, without some long-term proofs and the resolution of the trust and bonding issues. I mean, I couldn't am fairly happy with the situation with my GF. She knows nothing about my situation other than that the basics. Kids, divorce, etc. She lives in another town and we get together on weekends to sleep together and pal around. She is what they call on the dating sites, a friend with benefits. She wants more than that, but I just don't feel for her what I felt for my wife pre-affair. I have a confession to make. After our blow-up and the revealing of her affair, I went totally nuts. I had slept with not just a couple of women. I had slept with any woman I could, at least 15 or 20 or more, except for my GF and one or two others. I treated them all like nothing. I sometimes had slept with two or three on the same day. I am really ashamed about this. I could have done it a thousand times and it wouldn't have made me feel any better. 
Well, I have pretty much promised the kids we could do Christmas like in the past. Last year's holidays sucked. We had two Thanksgivings, one at my parents' and one at hers. When we sat down to eat, my daughter began to sing. We always had a tradition that before we ate, we would sing. We gather together to ask the Lord's blessings. There wasn't a dry eye in the house this year. We have been on speaking terms for a while now, but right after the blow up. I didn't speak to or see her for several months. We communicated via family, friends and lawyers. She finally persuaded me to talk to her about family matters. Kids, college, finances, etc. Since that time, we have been cordial, but I usually am very reserved around her. Most people are asking the same question I ask myself. Do I still love my ex-wife? It just isn't that easy to answer. A couple of things. I have always been an open and straightforward type of person. Now I find myself being guarded, aloof and very reserved around most people. The second thing happened right after the divorce was final. She came over to the house to get the remainder of her things, and we began to sort out the family photos and mementos. We were sitting on the floor and she began to cry, not silent tears but sobs and wails. She kept saying she was so, so sorry for what she did to me, how she thought about me all of the time and longed for me every night. She begged, on her knees for another chance. I was shocked beyond description. I did not know what to do, so I left the house. When I came back, she was gone. I, simply put, am so afraid to commit, to leave myself vulnerable, that it gives me the willies. One of the things she told me recently was that after the blow up, she drove around for hours trying to decide what to do. She called Brad and told him about the fight we had and that the affair was out in the open. He said she could stay with him, and she did, not having anywhere else to go. When she called asking to come home, she told me the truth that she was at his place. When I refused to let her come home, she was devastated. That was when she realized that their affair had to end, because she had no interest in a long-term relationship with him. Curious. Comments. Most affairs pretend to be just a cake on the side, with not too much thinking beyond the next day self-gratification. Absolutely no plans. The count with the idea they will never get busted. Going to OMs, while not excusable at all as somehow. From a detached, intellectual POV. As a third party, you can understand. You can sense truth in this a weird sense of being short of options. Trap. The same way you can understand wishing sustain some control, trying to avoid further exposure and shame, to religious parents, hence not going to their house. I've seen this scenario too many times to count going to AP's house do not having any other place to go. As you told her you were done, she didn't see a way back from the hole. You can only speculate about her motives given you never stayed calm enough to maintain a normal conversation with her since D-Day. Facts, not speculation, are, she begged for a chance since D-Day, through all the divorce proceedings, right after the divorce was final, literally on her knees, and that she still keeps trying today, while living an honorable life, getting her Sean T together. I see, anger management, church, offering whatever. OP responds, I don't know why she didn't go to her parents, except she would have had to explain what was happening to them which she didn't want to do, or maybe she wanted to sleep with Brad. At the time, my mindset wasn't about right or wrong, fair or unfair. It was about revenge and punishment and validation. Could I forgive her? Possibly, if she can prove that those hateful words were just that, words spoken in anger, and not what she really believed, at the time. I don't know how she can do that, but I would be receptive to talking about it. As for my freak out, she knows that I slept with a number of women, but not the exact number or how many times, but I'm not sure of it myself and would have to think about it, to recall all of them. What is most interesting is that she blames herself for all of it, and when she found out, was a basket case. What she told me is that in the present climate, she has to have a job, which she does. If we decide to try to R, she would be willing and happy to quit and look for another job, but if we don't try to R, she still has to support herself. Her opinion of Brad is something we have not talked about, except that she said that she ended it with him immediately after the blow-up and has not ever thought about renewing it. Actually, she did say once that every time she sees him, all she feels is shame. I know from my informant that she only talks to him about work-related things and doesn't go near him. Otherwise, I never said I was better, but when she walked out of the house, she lost any of the rights she would have had as a loyal spouse. I never betrayed her, deceived her, or left her. She did those things, not me. I view what happened as a reflex action to her cheating. Was it improper? Yes. Did I enjoy it? Of course, at first. But when my desire for revenge and validation was satisfied, I stopped the bed hopping and began to try to start new relationships. But I don't think it has any bearing on my quandary about R. We actually had a very good conversation last night. I called her to talk about money for books for our youngest, next semester. Afterwards she asked how I was doing and we made small talk for a while. And I don't know what got into me, but I asked if she wanted to go see a movie. This Saturday night, 
She started crying and junk and thanked me a whole bunch. I said don't thank me until you have seen the movie. And we actually laughed. We talked about her anger management classes and she said that she is now getting to some of the underlying causes and thinks they are part of what caused her to cheat as well. So, I guess I'm not ready to commit just yet, but I am ready to see what commitment might be like. Comments. Of course, you loved her and her you. You were together 25 years. There are so many shared memories, so many tough times that you went through together. Your children, waking up beside each other for all those years, knowing that if you touched her just there she would roll over and stop snoring without waking her up. So much life together cannot be simply be categorized as oh well. Five years together, you start again. Ten years together and you have invested a lot but there is room for another. Twenty years your dreams and long-term plans have had time to happen. Maybe they didn't. Maybe you promised more. Maybe she did. By now you know every part of her, every flicker on her face, every inflection in her voice. You know her every mood, her every fault. As she knows yours, she assumed you would always love her. She assumed you were a constant and then, and then, she found a part of you that she had never seen. The tough, unbending and absolute man who said no to the outside world so many times. Who protected your family, who bent and cracked over the years to hold it together. She saw you from the outside and, and did not recognize you. You said no to her in a way that she never expected and the other man said yes. She was used to that. You became the enemy and she wanted to hurt you because you would not accept her decisions. Then you start to recover, you both miss each other. Not a bit, not a memory of something else, but a real loss. Huge ongoing grief and loss at your friend, your lover, your partner. She can see now what she has lost. The man that was always there. Not Alpha, Gamma nor Beta but all of them. Because that is what it takes to stay married for 20 plus years. Don't rush. There is no rush. There will be something you can negotiate. There always has been. It may not be the same as before. It may not be a relationship as such. Just talk and reach a point where you can both live your lives without pain. OP responds. What I know about the affair is some of the background. The rest is what my ex-wife and others have told me and what I have learned for myself. Brad is a fairly new employee, has been at the hospital for less than a year. Eight to ten months, so the affair could not have been longer than that. The first I learned of anything inappropriate was about two or three months before D-Day. My ex says that the affair did not become physical until right before D-Day, and that the physical part lasted for three weeks and ended a week or so after D-Day, when she left his house and went to her parents. Please understand that this timeline is approximate. I know very little about Brad and his other relationships, and don't want to know. My beef is with my ex, not with Brad, because I can do very little about him. For now, my old dad always said that every dog has his day, so I will bide my time. At some point, I will get Brad alone with no witnesses and X him to a pulp. One thing I have learned is that there must be complete honesty for R to truly be effective and lasting. I'm not going to settle for anything less than a completely honest wife. Now, she has told me repeatedly that what she said that night was false and only said for its hurtful value. So, now if she ever intimates that what she said was true, or what she was feeling at the time, how can any trust be revived? I think I am willing to give her the opportunity to try to win me back and I think it's possible that I can forgive her. It will have to be based on what she has told me since that horrible night. Everything she has said and done since must be the complete truth. I will accept nothing less and do not feel that I can or should. She cheated. She will have to put up or shut up. Before I make any kind of long-term decision, I will take my time, and the R will be by my instructions. If I tell her to take 50 lie detector tests, she will take 50 lie detector tests. My game, my rules. She gets no free passes. She will have to earn her way back. Honesty is non-negotiable. We are in our late 40, with her a year younger than me. Brad is 37 to 38 something like that. No, I will kick his ex, at some point in time. I look forward to it. I'm an old hillbilly, I never forget a wrong done to me, and I always get payback. Lots to think about, I never mentioned it, but my ex-wife is a truly beautiful woman. Even after having three kids she looks, fine. People used to tell me all of the time how lucky I was to have such a stunning bride. Picture Elizabeth Taylor, without the flab, and you've got her. The electricity was enough to power a suburb. The tears were always close to the surface. I could barely pay attention to James Bond doing nasty things to assorted bad guys. It might have been a good movie, but you could not prove it by me. She told me that this was the happiest night she has had for two years. Afterwards, we had a latte, and I took her home. We got to her building and I didn't know what to do. Should I kiss her or not? I need not have worried. She came into my arms and it was a real good feeling. She said a lot of things but they are private things for my ears alone. But the last thing she said was that my arms were where she belonged, and that she would never stop being mine. And mine alone. I guess that should answer all of you who asked if I still love her or not. Yes, I do. She is working hard to learn to control her anger and to understand why she cheated. And I see. I didn't know this, but she has been in therapy since right after the divorce was final. Just back from doing a little Christmas shopping, 
and thought I'd talk about our two dates. We did a lot of talking and a whole lot more listening. Last night was mainly about the affair and our breakup. This morning was mainly about her IC and work she is doing to better herself, much of which I didn't know or care to learn about before. I must admit she is doing a lot to get to the bottom of her issues and has made a lot of progress. Without getting too specific, she is getting a much better handle on her anger and how she expresses it. Her counselor is very integrity and responsibility oriented, so my ex is having to face her bad choices without any sugar coating, which is good. We had a very nice lunch and I went shopping. I committed to nothing, as I'm not ready to do so. However, I agreed to have the holidays together, like in the past. By the way, she gave her notice to the hospital that she was quitting and informed the head of her department of the reason for it. This doctor was very helpful and understanding, so he gave her a reference to another hospital and she will be starting there after the new year. So, no more bread. Although his comeuppance is still in the future, I'm not going to say anything to the GF until I have made a decision or I have slept with the ex-wife. Whichever comes first. We are in a friends with benefits relationship so we don't talk about our private lives to each other. I don't really know any more about her life than she does about mine. I will not, however, lead her on or lie to her. Besides what could I say to her right now? I don't even know what is going to happen, myself, just yet. I did tell her about the women I slept with, between the time she left the home until the divorce was final. Because she was still legally my wife. After the divorce was final, it was and is, none of her business. If I choose to give her a chance at winning me back, I will then end any relationships I'm in. Hey, I'm honest. As my old daddy used to say, there isn't a road that doesn't have turns. I'm patient. Some people question my actions after my divorce. In my opinion, nothing I did following her cheating and disrespectful comments and leaving the home was my fault in any way. What is more, she agrees with me. 100% I know that she did call me to come home and I did refuse, but I'm thinking that most BS would have done the same thing. When she told me that she was at Brad's, I would also like to point out that never, ever, did I try to hide my activities, lie to her or to anyone else, or badmouth her to anyone. I have no interest in harming my ex-wife's relationship with our kids or to either family. Simply put, I felt that my marriage was over from the moment of her beginning the affair. And after that moment, I was an M, a free agent. What I'm doing is being cautious. I'm not going to be played again by my ex or anybody else. When I said she would have to prove herself, I didn't mean for a few weeks or months but long-term improvement. I'm no longer in revenge mode, but I have found out that there are good women out there and I'm not going to settle for being a plan B or renewed marriage without concrete evidence that there will be no repeat and also that her repugnant remarks were the result of anger and not her true feelings. I haven't said anything to FWB, just yet. I guess that I'm reluctant to let her go, sort of like hedging my bets. I'm being selfish, I know. We are going to meet Friday night, and I will tell her. Face to face. I don't want to burn my bridges, but I don't want her to feel like my plan B, either. So, I will tell her about the situation and let her decide, if she still wants my company. She is a really nice lady, and is very good in bed, but I simply don't feel any spark, with her. And believe me, I have tried to. Regardless of my ex-wife, we both realize that we are approaching a crossroads. She is wanting more and me wanting the status quo. I don't know what to think. This is the third or fourth time this has happened to me, since my ex-wife left our home. I will meet a woman, carefully explain that I want a FWB, bonding and recreation, but they always seem to want more than that, from me. I'm beginning to think that I might just be in love with my ex-wife, more than I ever thought. I don't look at this as cake eating at all. We are not married, so I really can date anyone I choose, I'm a free agent, until such a time as I decide to make it exclusive with one or the other, or anyone else, for that matter. Having said that, I will always be honest with everybody and give them the choice. Had a good night, tonight. She came over and made dinner and we relaxed and talked about the kids. Christmas, etc. I never mentioned the affair at all. She asks about the sleeping arrangements for Christmas Eve. I told her she could share my bed but hands off. We laughed about it. Then she said that would be the best Christmas present she has ever gotten. A pretty good night, for us, don't you think? If she wanted to schmooze me, she wouldn't have picked a time when I would be wary of it. Would she? There have been other times, kids be days, graduations, anniversaries, family outings when she could have done it or tried to. I think that I'm going to do the holiday thing and still take my time, but I don't think she is lying to me. And I don't think she lied to me even back then. You have to remember, she outed herself, and then when she wanted to come home, she told me where she was. At Brad's, why didn't she lie and say she was somewhere else? If she wanted to lie to me, she's had lots of chances but hasn't since that night. I don't expect her to act like a slave or a robot. Neither submissive nor emotionless. What I do expect and I think I have a right to expect is that she improves her behavior. From what family and friends have said, she is doing that. 
more than I ever thought or believed she could. It's been over two years now and she faithfully meets with her counselor and gotten more involved with her church and has been very proactive in her handling of her job and the situation with Brad. All of this is very good, I'm thinking. My comment, part two will come in the afternoon. OP has separated from his ex over a year. Is it ever worth to get back together with your ex? Comment down below. I think it's just one of the toughest path to take in your relationship. I think affair did not occur in the breakup. It would be a lot easier.